What's up, everybody? My name is David. Before we begin, I want to tell you all to please smash those like and subscribe buttons. Please, it really helps the channel grow. So with that out the way, let me begin with the story. All right, the name of this video is called Sex in Prison. Now, does it happen? Absolutely. Now, before we start, before we begin, let me first First and foremost, let me let you people know this first. First of all, before anything is said, I, me, personally, I don't condone it. I don't like it, and I'm not cool with it. I mean, to each his own, you know, what other people do is their business. But as far as me, myself, um, no, I don't, I don't mess around. I don't, you know, I don't give it a thumbs up or any of that, you know, so let... Let me make that very clear right out the back. Now, there is consensual, uh, uh, there is consensual sex in prison. I'm sure there is, and I've seen it myself, and it wasn't cool. But I, I had, I, I got my eye busted. I had to see it, you know. Now, this type of sex that I'm talking about is not consensual, and the story that I have to tell is about somebody. Who was taken advantage of, you know? Um, he was taken advantage of, that's all I can say, you know? Um, and another another thing, before we begin, I wanna say this also. I wanna let you people know is this, that I don't like to put names names and, and places and, and you know, things like that out there for the simple fact that I don't like putting, uh, I don't like putting people's business out there. I'll tell a story, but I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna tell you specifically who that person wants. The reason being is that I don't know that. I don't know if that person wants wants that business put out there. I haven't talked to that person. I I haven't asked that person. Hey, would you like? Is it a cool that I put your business out there on YouTube? You know. So most. De I'm pretty sure he's gonna say no. So you know. Uh, some people ask me. It's like, hey, why don't why don't you ever tell us who it was or this and that? You know. It's, and that's the reason, is because I don't like to put people's business out there. You know, it, it always, not only is it uh, unethical and it's not cool to do, but it can also uh, come back to bite you in the ass. So, I like to take care of myself. <laughs> my, I want to take care of myself, you know, so I don't like, I don't like to leave things out there like that in the open, you know. Anyways, with that out the way, let me begin by saying, oh, and another thing I got to say is that, the person, the perpetrator in this video, from my understanding, he passed away. Um, he passed away some, some years ago. Um, I don't know if it's true, but I, I don't know. I don't have the specific facts about it, but I did hear that this person had passed away, you know, and he had, uh, he's no longer with us. So, you know, um, that's that's the reason why I am putting the story out there like this but anyways let me begin all right so I was in Chino um, and this was uh this was some time ago this was uh damn 20 years ago yeah about about 20 years ago um, I was in Chino doing time now I was on third tier um uh, and the dude that the dude that I'm uh, the dude uh, his name was Cooley, Cooley was was black, so um, the way that I got to know him better was that I worked in the kitchen with him. We both had a kitchen job, so we got to run around. We got to you know we got to uh, after we were done on the um, doing our kitchen duty uh, after we fed and after we cleaned and all that, uh, we used to go roam the tiers and you know we used to. Pass whatever needed to be passed. You know, he would pass for his people. I would pass. I was one of the runners for my people. He was black. Um, so, you know, that's we we had interactions with each other. You know, he, he was a funny he was a funny dude. You know, he <laughs> he kept it popping. Put it that way, he kept it popping in there. You know, it's just always had everybody laughing. Always had everybody <laughs> everybody uh everybody bopping their heads because he was aspiring to be a rapper. And the dude had some flows. The the dude can flow. So I, I, so everybody would always just be listening to him, you know, and doing his thing. So I remember he had gotten a celly. 
So he got he got this Sally. He got a little youngster. He's about 20 years old. Little black youngster. And Cooley's cell was right below mine. So I was right on top. He was he was right below me. I was on the third. He was on the second tier. So, and anybody that knows it's been a Chino, it's bars. It's not doors. They don't have they don't have closed doors. It's bars. So, um, if you're talking, if when it's real quiet, if you're talking to your celly, uh, your neighbors, your neighbors could hear uh, the people. Be, sometimes, if if you if the depending on the volume, uh, your neighbors downstairs can 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 hear and vice versa. You know, the the people upstairs can hear. You can hear everybody's conversations. Put it that way. So, I. <laughs> I remember uh, um, this li this little youngster was a uh, um, he was soft for a better word you know if just I'm trying to find I'm trying to find the word to say but all I can tell you about him is that he was soft you know he was just like he wasn't uh, doing time being in prison and being around thugs and being about uh, around uh, convicts was not him you know it wasn't it wasn't in the cards for him you know that's what I'm trying to say that wasn't him that wasn't his personality he wasn't uh, uh he wasn't aggressive he wasn't a. Uh, he was a. Uh, he wasn't a convict you know he was a. Uh, he wasn't a wolf he was a sheep you know what I'm saying it's like he was a sheep really really a sheep you know like and the dude didn't do it. He didn't do himself no favors, man. Because this guy was always on the tier, you know, uh, talking about he sold he sold drugs and he was a this hardcore drug dealer and he he had all this and he had all that and he always telling stories that everybody knew were were BS, you know. Just what it just it wasn't true. We all knew that, you know. And it just we would, I would hear this guy and I in my head I'd be like, man, shut up, man. Do yourself a favor and just be quiet and just chill, you know? If you're not, you know, if you're not that guy, then don't try to be that guy, you know what I'm saying? It's like nobody's going to fault you for, you know, for for not being, you know, not being rugged, not being tough, not being, you know? Hey, if that's not you, then just stay out the way, you know? Just, that's all you got to do. But the dude would, he would not do that. He would just talk and talk and talk and say the stupidest things, like, and for for instance, one time he said, um, he said that he used to sell down down in downtown LA, <laughs> and that he, <laughs> he used to say that he used to sell to the Clippers, the old Clippers basketball team, uh, when they had Keith Kloss and they had uh, uh, uh Michael Oliver Candy. Anybody who knows basketball and knows about you know, knows knows who those who those players were, you know. But anyways. He said he used to sell he used to sell crack to them, you know, and he used to go sell, and then he would start uh, sell stolen stuff, stuff that the smokers would bring to him that he would sell, turn around and sell to them like jewelry and uh and whatnot, you know. And so everybody used to be laughing. He used to so we would all hear and we all be laughing on the tear, you know. Um, it, it was just he was just one of those type of guys those are the type of stories those are the type of way out stories that he used to tell so now during this time Cooley used to throw out um he used to Cooley his celly used to throw out things like man i'm getting tired of you man if you don't stop doing that i'm gonna go up in you I i'm not lying i'm gonna go up in you you know <laughs> So he would say these things right over the tear. He would say them loud so everybody would hear, and we all would laugh, you know. But then when I when I would go to work with Cooley, you know, he would tell me, "Man, my cell is getting on my nerves, man, with all these stories, man. You know what, man? I'm gonna just do them." <laughs> I mean, I'm not laughing because I'm trying to make fun of this uh, the subject. It's just I used to laugh, you know. This is uh, when he used to tell me. I used to laugh. I used to go like, "Damn, Cooley." You're Man, you're crazy, fool. Whatever, you know. I'll be like, yeah, whatever, you know. So I thought, I just thought that that, that was Cooley, you know. Unbeknownst to me is that Cooley was plotting and he, he was he was thinking of something. So anyways, you know, think, it went on like this for about three weeks. They were selling for three weeks. So during these three weeks, uh, Cooley was put constantly more and more putting it out there that he was going to take this dude's manhood, you know. <laughs> he was gonna bust his cheeks, 
And he was telling him, man, I'm gonna bust your cheeks, man. I'm trying to be nice and not stick this big old anaconda up in you. And everybody would laugh, you know, but that's those are the type of things he would say, you know. So one day I was, uh, I was, one day I was gonna get, uh, <laughs> one day I was, uh, going, I was going over to, I was supposed to go to the kitchen. I was, I was supposed to start working and one of the homies pulled me out. His name was Tweety, you know, and he goes, <laughs> So he, you know, he would come by, he, he was the lead. He was the, um, he was the lead, he was a cook in, in the kitchen. He was the lead, that was his job. So he came around and he got us ready. He's like, hey, you ready to come to work? You know, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then he would, he was let the, the guard know and they'll, the, they'll slide the gate, they'll open, the, open up the, the cell. So as Tweety, I was in the third tier, like I said, I was in the third tier towards the back, all the way to the back. So Tweety was coming up the back stairs and Cooley's cell was right underneath me. So as he was coming up the back stairs, oh, before I say this, uh, Cooley had made, Cooley had made some, uh, remember he had made some wine, he had made some pruno. And he told me he was gonna get, he, he was gonna get, the day before, he's like, oh man, the batch is ready. Tomorrow the batch is gonna be ready, so I'm gonna get my celly drunk. We're gonna celebrate, and I'm gonna do <laughs> I laughed because I, like, like before, you know, I thought he was just, I thought this, he was just, you know, talking, talking smack, talking crap, you know what I'm saying? So fat, back to, like I was saying, Tweety was coming up, the homie Tweety was coming up the stairs. And as he's coming up the stairs, he stopped, I, I remember he stopped, and I heard because I was at my bars, I, oh, hell no. What, what are you doing, dog? Oh, hell no. And he, he came up the stairs and he came to my cell and he's like, hey, hey. Cooley's downstairs, he's, he's boning his celly, man. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, and I could tell by his face, you know, his facial expression, I, his his face, he looked like, he looked like he's seen a ghost, or, you know, like he, he just looked off, and I had never seen Tweety look like that before. He's always laid back, cool cat, you know? So I see, when I seen his face, I knew he wasn't playing, you know? So he got my door cracked, he opened the door, and he's like, come on, come on. So we went downstairs, and as I'm going downstairs, man, I look, I look down, as I'm going down the stairs, I look down, I look down to the cell, and I see Cooley had his celly B, we called him B. He had his celly B, bent over with his pants down, and he was, he was giving it to him. Oh my God, ugh, yeah, and, I looked and I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, hell. So we just went, you know, we just went to the kitchen. We were like, oh, hell no, this dude is he's getting down like that. <laughs> so anyways, uh, um, that was their problem. We looked at it like that's their problem. You know, that, that's their people, that's them because they're, they're black, you know? So we're not gonna get involved with their, with their people, their politics or anything like that, you know? I'm not trying to see it either, but you know, whatever, you know? <laughs> so. You know, and then I, I remembered all the things that Cooley was saying that he was gonna do, it. and I it hit me like, dude, this dude wasn't wasn't playing. He's serious, you know, dead serious. So, anyways, you know, Cooley wasn't working that day, so you know that day, I guess, you know, he planned it out. So they drank more. They drank more that night because it was already the afternoon, and they they drank more. And youngster had never gotten drunk like that. He had never drank Bruno, and he was out for the rest of the, the night. All night he was out. The next morning is when it was all bad. That's when he started talking. That's when I shouldn't laugh. I don't want to laugh at this youngster's uh, problems, but I remember he woke up and 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 it, the tear was dead quiet. And I remember he woke up in the morning and he's like, "Oh, oh!" I guess he was feeling his 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 butt his his backside. You know, I guess he was feeling his backside and he's like, "Oh." Oh hell no, cool, cool. What you do, dog? What, what the hell? What? And then he, I guess he had to use the restroom, <laughs> and he said that he he goes, man, everything came out, man. What, what the? And he started, he started hollering for the cops. You know, he started, he, hey, hey, co, co. So uh, I coolly was, I, I, 
I, I can hear Cooley was trying to like grab him and tell him, Shh, and the youngster was just like, no, nah, CO, CO, CO. So finally the, the CO came, the COs came, not just one, like three of them came and they're because of the way he was hollering. So, you know, he told them, he had told them like right then and there, like, hey man, this guy, this guy, this guy raped me, man. So, you know, it, it, yeah, it was all bad, you know, it was all bad. They came, they, they gaffled them. Man, they took him out. Uh, they took him to the hospital. Uh, they took Cooley. They took him. They took him to the hole. They took him to the Palm Hall. They took him straight to Ace at Seg. And from my understanding, uh, uh, he got he got. They pressed charges, and oh boy, B pressed charges, and yeah, he went down for it, man. He got caught some time. But like I said, a few years, ten years later, or something like that, I heard that Cooley had passed away. You know. And, um, I guess he had got it now. He got like four years or something like that for that rape extra added to his sentence. He was about to get out. He got another four years to add it to his sentence. And he was a uh, sex offender and all that, you know. So, yeah, man, that's just that story, man. It's like one thing, one more thing I want to say before I end, man, is uh, for those people out there who are in the lifestyle as far as prison, if you're in the gangs, if you're using drugs, you know that you're gonna end up in prison. You know you're gonna have to come to the big house. You know, that's just how it goes. You know, we all have to go through it. And if you're not the type, it doesn't matter if you're Mexican, black, white, Asian, whatever you are, it doesn't matter. If you know deep down inside, in your heart, that you're not a wolf, and that you have no qualities, nothing, nothing even remotely close to being a wolf, and you know you're a sheep, my advice to you is to stop what you're doing, think about it before you go upstate, before you go in the county, before you subject you subject yourself to that lifestyle. Stop and think, man. Think about it, you know? There's a lot of there's some hardcore dudes up in there, man, who are who want to get to know you and are going to get to know you. So, you know, think about it. Look in the mirror. Look at look at look at get a mirror. Look at yourself in that mirror and ask yourself, do I have it in me? You know, and if if you do have it in you and you want to go in that lifestyle and you're you're gonna keep doing, it, hey, more power to you, whatever. To each his own. You're gonna be in there, but you will mind somebody. That's what I will tell you. You are gonna mind somebody in there. You know, there's always somebody harder. There's always someone's bigger, someone stronger, someone smarter. You're not the best. You know, you can you you're not the best. You know, there's always gonna be somebody that's gonna outdo you, more vicious, more tough. You know, and with that said. I'm out. But before I go out, let me tell you again. Please like and subscribe. Shout outs to Savage Studios and to Chronicles of Judah 144, man. My love, much love and respect to you guys, man. Keep doing your thing. I'm out.